Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and in this video, we're going to talk about some of the performance issues in the Docker container. Now these issues are not really amazing. Anybody who is working in the Node project for let's just say two months or two weeks even can actually point out these mistakes and these are not something really very impressive, but I think these are worth discussing especially for the people who are working with the node for the very first time or understanding the project architecture of the node, these are something which you should know. So let's go ahead and talk about this. So first and foremost, uh, I have stopped my container being running with this command. So I would like to first run it on the local host and do some changes. So this is what it's going on. And when I say npm start, it's gonna go ahead and get started. Make sure in case yours is not getting started, make sure the node module folder is there. I've already installed it by running the command npm install so that we can actually run this project. Go onto the local host and it says visiting the root. But let's just say this is a very common thing that happens in all the project. Let's just say this is being decided later on that we are not gonna be throwing something like visiting root. Instead, we are designing an application which handles the API. So for that, you have made some changes in the project. So instead of saying this res.send and all these stuff, you have decided, no, we are going to send a JSON response. Now, JSON response is something which is usually sent over like an API, but in this case, we are just sending a JSON response. So there we go. And JSON is an object. So we're going to hit curly braces, hit enter, and we are going to simply say a message is going to be thrown with a string, uh, something like you are visiting root. There we go. So this has all been done. Now, obviously, the basic thing is you go first onto the terminal, you kill the application, you start it again, so the changes get in effect, you come up here, hit the reload, and you say voila. So now my application is an API based application, let's just assume that. So the, obviously, the next thing is that you really want to do is come up here, uh, stop this. And obviously, so in this case, I have made a couple of changes. So obviously the node module folder is there. Now later on, we're gonna learn that how we can avoid some of these specific folders so that it doesn't really consume our time. But right now, that's not our goal. So I'm gonna just remove this, move to bin. And now we want to update this application onto the container as well. So how we're gonna do that? We obviously are gonna run that command again because since we have made some changes it doesn't really mean that these changes are being made in the container as well because right now our folders are not linked properly. There are surely ways in which you can bring a folder from the container and link it to your uh, folder as well so that you can work on it, save everything directly on the container. But again, that's somewhere uh, for another time. As of now, if I just start the container just like this and even mention the port and something, and when I run this, this root application and I hit a reload, it still says visiting root because things are not yet updated in the container. So how we can do that? We need to build our image again. Now here, notice something different. We're gonna hit control C again. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and build that. So hopefully the build command is up here. There we go. So the build, make sure you put a dot T, uh, dash T as well and a dot at the very end. We're gonna hit enter. And now notice here that we are not using cache anywhere here. Not anywhere, some places cache is being used. Uh, like we are having an Alpine image. We are creating a working directory, so it was already created. So that's why we were able to create a cache. But after uh, making this copy, we are not able to use the cache because obviously uh, new things are being copied and all these things are going copied up here. Now one better way of having this is by understanding the architecture of our node application. Remember I told you, first and foremost, the package.json comes, then based on this comes the node modules, and if there are no changes in the package.json, in this case also, we simply don't need to reinstall this node module. So in all of the node modules that you're gonna see all around the web, you're gonna see the similar architecture that I'm about to show you. So we're gonna go on to the Docker file, and we're gonna say, hey, before running this command, we don't want to copy all the things first. First and foremost, we just want to copy the package.json file, which is in the current directory. Copy it to the root directory, then run the npn install, and then after that, just copy all the things from the source, and we are going to copy it to the destination. 
Now, right now, we don't have any idea how we can avoid some certain files and all of that. So I think that's, uh, that's going to be discussed later on. So we're going to save that. And now when I build my application again, there we go. This time it's going to use all, no cache at all because we have made some changes which are breaking changes. So there we go. Now it's working fine. And now when I run my application again, uh, let's go ahead and show you the command as well. Again, the same command, we have already seen that. We hit enter and hopefully this time we will be able to see a response. Let me show you a response which is a JSON based response. Okay. Now, the impact of this is we will be able to use a cache memory. So let's just say we go up into the index file and later on you decided, you know what, this is not enough. I'm going to create some more routes for login and sign up as well. So you copy this same get two times and you decide that I'm going to simply have a route for login and you are visiting login route and same for sign up. And you simply say you are visiting sign up route. There we go. So really, we are just throwing up some JSON response. And as the pro as the application grows up, these are pretty basic route. I have not made anything like groundbreaking. These are just copy and pasting stuff. So that's what we have got so far. Our application is working fine. Hope so. And what we're going to do is we're going to build an another image with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop this control C and Let's run this again. We want to build this again. Now this time, notice, uh, first three steps were like, whoop, that got really, really quickly. Because this time it was not doing the npm install, which is a heavy command. It directly moved on to the copy. So was there any changes in any other file? Yes, it was. And then it moved on to the copy. If, notice here, this is important statement. If some more dependencies were installed, just like we installed the express, then obviously there would be a change in package.json file. And since there would be a change in package.json file at step number three, therefore we cannot use the cache for npm install. A fresh will be installed. Hence doing everything right, just like we want. So now the impact of this is, now when I run this application again, uh, npm run opening up my port onto this node app, hit enter. It's running absolutely fine. I go, I see no changes, but now since I have created more route or route, uh, I'm going to simply have a login. There we go. We have got a login route and similarly, we have got a sign up route as well. Sign up. There we go. Okay. So now it's time to give you a little bit of the assignment. Okay. Now what you're going to do is since you know now how to create a new route, then what you're going to do is I want you to create a logout route as well. In the logout route, exactly same, you will be visiting a URL slash logout and the message that will be printed will be you are successfully logged out. We are not going into the uh, details about how things are happening right now, but I really want you to do this much only. Once you have done that, create an image, a Docker image, and run that successfully, open up a port. Now, since we are talk talking about a little bit on the port side, let me show you one more interesting thing, that in the command that we are talking onto the port, just one side tip, uh, we are talking that open up 8,000 port on my computer and on the Docker machine, we are already listening, or the Docker container, we are already listening on 8,000. It doesn't really matter on what machine you want to, on what port on your machine you want to listen. So let's just say you want to listen on 4000. So now the 4000 port will be connected to the 8000 port of the Docker container. So that is also something very common when I hit enter. Although our application is running on the 8000, but since we are connected through the Docker, now no longer our machine is connected to 8000. Hit reload, nothing happens. But instead, since on our machine, we have opened up a port 8000, 4000, which is connected to the 8000 port of Docker container. That's why you'll be able to run it up here. Again, a nice little trick, but again, don't get too much confused. You will rarely, rarely see that people making this kind of mess. Usually they open up the same port on the uh, actual machine as well as the Docker container. Just a side note I wanted to point out. So there you go, you got your assignment as well for the logout. Make sure you click a photo of your assignment, post me up on the Instagram. I would love to check out what you are doing up and in case you are following up this series entirely. I'm super happy with this Docker series and I'm able to just get through all the inside details about the Docker. Of course, referring to the documentation is always a great idea. That's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.